Grom the Paunch, revered by Gobbos, detested by Elves. He now comes to the Vortex and Mortal Empires campaigns, bringing along his cauldron and a whole heap of Gobbos. This video is going to be a guide on how to start strong as Grom in the Mortal Empires campaign, giving yourself a good foothold to work from to ensure you have the best chance of success. So finish off your troll leg drumstick and let's get going. So as mentioned, there is Vortex or Mortal Empires campaign for Grom. So the first orcs to go into Vortex, but we're going to be doing Mortal Empires today as that is what more people seem to play. The unique mechanic that Grom has is Grom's Cauldron, which allows him to get buffs from making recipes. Other than that, he's got bad relations with High Elves, as you might expect, a chance to get pump wagons in his Wars, and a couple of buffs to Goblin units and pump wagons. And the playthrough I'm doing for this guide is going to be on Very Hard, Very Hard, so if I can get it to work on this difficulty, you should be fine for all of them except Legendary. But if you're playing Legendary, you probably don't need this guide. So we start off in Paravon, surrounded by different Bretonian factions. There's a small Paravon army nearby, which we're going to have to deal with. First thing to do though, is get your hag in your army. Because she's going to be more useful in the battle than trying to do stuff outside of it. Then go to Massif or Cal, your only settlement, and well, build something. You could either do the pile of shiny stuff or the growth building, either are going to be useful. I'm going to go for the money in this case. Now, doing this first battle can go one of two ways. You'll either be able to attack them straight away, or they'll run away like this and you'll have to follow them. If they don't run away, you'll probably end up on this map, Kinel, which can be a hard one because it's very hilly. And the enemy is just going to sit there. They're not coming down off their hill, you've got to go to them. Now, if you attack from where you start, you'd have to go down the hill and then up their hill, which means you're going to be fighting uphill, which is never a good way to have to go. So what you want to do is move your army over to the right, all the way to the end of the deployment zone, and then you'll be on the same hill that they are, and you'll have a much easier time staying on a level playing field without having to fight uphill. So make sure you do that if they don't run away on the first battle, otherwise you do make life a lot more difficult for yourself. If they do run away though, you simply pursue them and we're going to fight this battle. Even though we could probably win with the auto resolve, we'll take a fair pounding, which is really going to slow us down. So best to fight the battle so we can minimize casualties and keep on rolling. And a lot of these early battles are fairly simple. Just use your gobos as a little front line, flank around with the trolls, hit the hammer and anvil, break their lead ship nice and quick. And you can use Grom on his nifty speedy chariot and the pump wagons to harass all the missiles and artillery. Pretty easy wins if you do this correctly. Try to beat them by breaking their leadership rather than killing all their men because you'll lose far less in the process. Once this is done, the army will be out of the way and we'll have a free shot at Kinel. And this is why fighting that battle was important so that we're not too depleted to try and take on Kinel in this same turn. So then go ahead and take Kinel like it ain't no thing, which it probably won't be. Although again, I would advise you fight the battle. Could win by auto resolve, but We'll probably lose too many gobos in the process and that will slow down our momentum, which we don't want early. We're looking to try and take the Paravon region quick. Again, the same plan as before, gobo frontline, trolls around the flanks, pump wagon and grom to harass missiles. Take advantage of the poor Bretonian leadership of their infantry. If we get the trolls around the back, we not only inflict fear on them, but also the attack in the rear penalty and they will run away super quick. And as you can see, we only had three losses in this battle, so those tactics work pretty well. Now for what we want to do with the settlement, we might want to raise it to get some war up, but we're going to occupy it so that we can get some land and start getting some income as we only have the one region at the moment. And one more thing to do before you end the turn is to recruit more gobos. I'm going to get two spears and one missile so that we can have a sizable force to go and take the city of Paravon. Now as for Kinel building, I'm going to say leave it. You could build something if you want to, it's not the end of the world, but I'm going to leave it for now just in case I'm wasting money for reasons we'll get to in a second. Now when it comes to Grom's skill points, Root Marcher is obviously the first one, and then we're going to work to battle effects and go for the Gobos, so that we can increase the strength of our Gobos, as we're just going to be running a Gobo-only build early. And at this point, Grom can still be useful, even though he's not very tough, but he can get away from stuff pretty easily as he's on that chariot. As for your River Hag, Soul Blight is always a good spell to take early as it reduces enemy armor, you can do that on a group of enemies as well, to really help the Gobos out as you progress. For the technologies, I like to go with the Go Bigger or Go Faster first. Both of those are useful. You could then work your way to Healy Mushrooms, which give plus 10 replenishment, which is really nice. And then I like to try and work my way to No Complaining for 3 Obedience. Good technologies to take early, I think. Now at this point, we've got our sights set on Paravon, so we're looking to build up our army for that. 
You will be getting a bunch of quests here as well, which we'll probably be doing automatically as we go, so no need to think too much about them. Now, the next step is to move towards Paravon, but make sure you stay inside the Canal zone so that you can still recruit. Don't go into the enemy zone, otherwise we won't be able to recruit. Recruit a few more gobos, whatever combination you like, and we'll be nearly ready to go. Paravon itself has an 11 garrison, which isn't too bad, and they may very possibly be building a reinforcement army there as well, but this is honestly nothing to worry about because they pretty much only ever recruit mounted yeoman cavalry, who are pretty rubbish. Not to mention even more rubbish in a siege. And that is pretty much all there is to do for this turn. We can't upgrade any of our city settlements yet, so nothing to worry about there. Just move on the turn and we will go after Paravon. And with the start of our next turn, that is exactly what we're going to do. Attack Paravon. And you'll see they've got a bit of a garrison army there, which looks a bit intimidating with its strong cavalry and some foot squires. But the reinforcements are just that crappy mounted German, so nothing really to worry about there. This battle can look a little bit daunting, but it's not that hard if you use a few tactics. Don't bother wasting time waiting for siege equipment. Place your army in a box sort of shape on the edge of one wall of the settlement. Don't spread them out in a long line. This is going to make the enemy spread out. We want them all to be in one specific part of the walls so that we can trick them and run off around the other side to this gate. They'll all have to run and try to catch up by which time we'll be through the gate and inside. So once you've started the battle, make sure you select your entire army and shift them all over to the other gate. Get their gobo legs moving as quick as they can to avoid all the missile fire damage. This is another reason why we don't want to spread out along the wall because we'll be running in front of those towers and archers for longer. Go ahead, get your trolls on that door as well, maybe Grom too, as he can get there pretty quick on his chariot, and we can bash down that door ASAP. A couple of other little things you can do to try and hinder the enemy, I like to kind of sacrifice my missile units, put them along this wall, so that they shoot everyone that runs to try to get to that other gate. I also send one unit of gobos up onto the wall to kind of act as a roadblock to slow any of the units down coming to try and protect the other gate. Once you get through the gate, you can kind of block to the left and try and slow all the units down and send all your strong units, your trolls and Grom and the Hag, to the center. Try and capture that zone in the center, it'll make life a lot easier than trying to kill all the Bretonians. Honestly, this battle can go easier or harder, depending on how well the AI wants to play that day. In this particular run, the AI were making it difficult, they do have some Grail Knights in this garrison, so they can be a little bit tougher to get through, but just overwhelm them, hit them with the trolls, hit them with Grom, use Soul Blight from the Hag to reduce their armor. As you can see, I'm just holding everything back with some Gobos and the Pump Wagons on the other side, just to try and buy some time for all my trolls to get in the center, capture it, and just win by holding the victory point. And this is fine, it doesn't matter if we take too much of a pounding in this battle, we've got a few turns to replenish from where we're going to go next, so all good to just throw yourself into this battle and have some fun. Once you've taken the city, Paravon will be yours and you'll be able to occupy it, which I would recommend you do rather than raising it, so that we can have our second province and really start to try and make a little bit of money so we can get more gobos. Along the way, you should get a few quests completed as well and you should get a new ingredient, which is what we need for Grom's Cauldron. Up to this point, you only have one ingredient, so you can't actually do anything. We need two ingredients to be able to use the cauldron. We've taken out Paravon as a faction, we've taken their province, we're looking good. A quick building upgrade to do, I recommend increasing the garrison personally, I think it saves a lot of lives and a lot of sackings further down the line, so always good to have those reinforcement buildings. And we want to try and stabilize these two provinces now, as we do have a little bit of territory, going to go for the growth and public order commandment to help us out there. Now for Grum's Cauldron, you only have two ingredients, so you've only really got one choice. You combine these together and it gives you a recipe. That recipe will give you different effects. As you can see, bangers and smash, which increases Grum's charge bonus and such. He has a charge bonus increase separately. You get some reputation for your war, growth for all your provinces. That's really nice to have early and regeneration for your Gobbo army. Pretty powerful stuff. And you're going to need a fair amount of scraps to do this, so make sure you haven't used up all your scraps on unit upgrades and things. Those can wait. I prefer to do technologies and things like this. More important stuff, powerful stuff, early. Now we should get a few missions completed from all this, which will be a nice little bit of extra income. And now we can have a little break. We can take a rest. We're just going to sit in Paravon, replenish a little bit, and recruit some more gobos, because why the hell not? Maybe some trolls if you want to take the time, but I recommend not taking too long here, because we want to move down and start to get after our next target. On the next turn, or somewhere around the next turn, we should be able to upgrade our main capital settlement. So of course, go ahead and do that. Now we're going to start to move down south, back towards Kinel. We're going to be able to replenish a little bit here along the way. You could always merge your goblin units if you don't want to wait for replenishment, and then just recruit some more if you've got the money. And still at this point, I'm not building anything in Kinel, mostly because it might just get taken out later and we don't want to waste the money on it. You could buy something though, it'll just be a little bit risky. 
We then do need to buy though a goblin big boss hero so that we can scout ahead and just check where our enemies are going to be before we go diving headlong into enemy territory. So we can get him and then we're going to use him to scout down into Carcassonne because that is where we're going next. Obviously you have to do it on the next turn though. Now somewhere around this time you should get a notification that looks a little bit like this. Hag Merchant Spotted. This is where we're going to be able to buy our ingredients for Grom's Cauldron so that we can get new different combinations for him to munch down. Now it seems to be random where this hag will spawn. For me it's over here by my capital. I'd say go and see her if you can if it's not too far away. Honestly we've got a bit of time at this point where we can kind of do what we want. So go and see your tasty hag and see what she's got to offer you. Make sure you get inside the zone. And then you'll be met with this window where you can decide what you want to do and how you want to interact with the hag. You can just outright buy the ingredient, so nice and simple. You can let her cook a recipe for you, which will change the recipe that you've already got active. You could try her challenge, which if you complete it, you'll get an ingredient and some money. Or you can just rob her blind. For me, I've got the money right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and buy the ingredient. So I've got that when I want to try a new recipe. So that's a bit of a side quest, if you will. And I'm just going to go ahead here and encamp, even though it's going to be raiding my own lands and hurt my public order a little bit. It's not too big of a deal at this point. Public order, we don't really need to worry about too much. We'll be back sorting it out before it gets too bad. Now, for a quick word on diplomacy of all the factions around you. Like I said, you're surrounded by Bretonians. They're all not great on you, so they probably will declare war on you eventually. But if we can take out these two early, Paravon and Carcassonne, this is who we're going for. That's going to help us out and we'll kind of have them dealt with from one side. You may get declared war on by Aranessa randomly, but she never really seems to do anything. And also the Wood Elves don't like you being near them, so they declare war on you as well, typically. But they never really seem to bother you, they just sit in their tree and give you dirty looks. Obviously, the High Elves all hate you as well, but they're not going to bother you for now, so no need to worry about them. And that's about it. Only really the Bretonian factions to worry about early. And now we're going to use our Goblin Big Boss to scout the area and try to find out where Carcassonne's big army is. Usually it's always in Castle Carcassonne, so that's fine, that's where they are, we don't need to worry about them. If we know they're there, then we know we're free to attack Brion, its other settlement, which will be undefended. So when you're ready, make your move down towards Brion, raid their territory, because why the hell not, and get ready for some more war. At this point, you shouldn't be at war with Carcassonne, so you should just be able to roll up to it and they won't do anything about it, and it'll be too late by the time they realise. Brion is a pretty easy take for you. You could auto resolve it, which I do here, but I'd probably recommend not to. Again, just fight the battle, get the easy win, save your troops because you're going to need them in a minute. Just saves us having to sit around for a turn or two replenishing. Now we're going to start to move towards Carcassonne in a minute, but we have to be careful because Carcassonne has a big army. You can try blocking the army with your goblin big boss, which is nice if you manage to pull it off. In this case, I don't. The reason it's handy if it's successful is it stops them going after Kinel. I ran this campaign maybe three or four times and Carcassonne reacted differently every time. One time they went and stood next to Canel like they were going to take it but they just stood there while I took Castle Carcassonne. Which would have been a trade I was happy with because they wouldn't be able to take either of my other two places because they've got big garrisons and walls. And then we could just go and take them out. The other two things that might happen is that Carcassonne will just sit in their castle and you'll have to do a siege or they'll come out and fight you. Which is what is going to happen in this case. Now this battle can look a little bit intimidating if you're new, but if we look closely at their army, they've got a lot of archers. And it's very easy to render archers useless, which is exactly what we're going to do in this battle. The same tactics as always, really. Bring that gobbo front line, get them to tie up some units, let the trolls flank around the sides. Also try and get a few spare gobbo units to flank around the sides, so you can really pursue and pressure those missile units and render them useless. Hit the hammer and anvil on the front line with the trolls, get Grom and the pump wagons to go and harass the missiles as well as all those spare gobbos and this battle is again pretty easy. Just look to harass the missiles while you break the infantry leadership. What you don't want to do is let their missile units sit there and fire at you because then they will blast you to pieces. If you're having trouble you can always go slow-mo. But of course this is only if they come out and attack you. They may sit in their castle and force you to besiege them. Either way, you should have them running with their tail between their legs and your army won't be too bad from it. On the start of the next turn, we can take out any reinforcing armies and go ahead and besiege them. I'd advise you build some siege towers now, just to make it a little bit easier. As there's no rush now, we can take the time to build the equipment. There's no armies coming to save them, so we're all good. We're also building up our war pretty nice at this point. We're nearly at full war, so we'll be able to go crazy soon and unleash. You can build things at Canel now if you want to, now that we know Carcassonne isn't a threat. You could always attempt to build the garrison building here, I suppose, but it might be more money than it's worth. I've got a couple of other buildings going. Increasing the public order is obviously important at this point. Just getting rid of Carcassonne, and then we can relax for a while and try and build up the stability of all the lands we've conquered. 
They may come out and try to fight you, which is fine. Just use the same tactics as before. This is just better for us because they'll be even more beaten down. You can keep building the towers if you like, or you could just try and go for it. But either way, you should be able to take Castle Carcassonne fairly easily. The poor old Fae getting mowed down by Grom, the final insult to losing her kingdom. And that is pretty much going to do it for starting strong. We've now got a decent kingdom of all Paravon, all of Carcassonne, and our beginning capital settlement. So it's a bit of a frantic pace. We gain a lot of territory very quickly, very early. This is turn 11, and we've got three provinces. So pretty fast start. We are going to need to take some time now and start to get the stability of these areas down. Otherwise, we're going to have rebellion all over the place. Fighting all these battles as well has led us to our war, so we're very nearly there. We'll be able to use that in a minute, but for now we just want to take a bit of time, sort out the public order, and then move on to whoever we want our next target to be. So there we go. A strong start as Grom. We've got ourselves a nice bit of territory. It is a bit spread out, so we do have some space between them, but nothing really seems to bother you. Everything from the south just seems to leave you alone, so we don't have to worry about anything below Carcassonne. Like I said, the Wood Elves will declare war on you. They don't really seem to do anything. One time I had a small army come out and harass me a little bit, but it wasn't that big of a bother. You could try and take them out with the war if you want to, but that would be a pretty hefty challenge. For now, we can just sit back and let the last few points roll into the war over the next couple of turns while our public order stabilizes, while we start to get our buildings together, and we can just get ourselves a bit more ready for anyone who's going to come after us. And from here, the world is really your oyster. You should only be a few points away from your war, so just take a couple of turns, build that up, and obviously you can go and do whatever the hell you want with that. The victory objectives are pretty standard, so you can kind of do what you like. You need to take out Ivress at some point, a few more if you want to get the long victory, but the next step could be going after Bordalo if you want to. Save up, get your war, and then when you're ready, just come and absolutely devastate Bordalo. You could take out Aquitaine and then Bordalo. You got Castle Bastogne as well. So you've got some options there if you want to start to head north and expand your territory. The problem with this, though, is that there's a lot of seaports. There's a lot of ports here to try and defend. And as you're going to be at war with all the High Elves, it's, well, very difficult to defend them from the High Elves. I have had an invading army come over in the later turns. You can see they could easily get to any of these three settlements. So if you take all those ports, you've got a lot of work on your hands to try and defend them. So having this small start with just one port settlement is a good way to go, I think. And like I said, none of this stuff down here to the south is going to bother you at all. So nothing to worry about there. Come on, cross. Let me cross. No. Why aren't you crossing? Ugh. Yeah, there we go. None of this is going to bother you. This territory is fine. The only other thing that might come down is maybe a few turns on from now, you'll get the Vanna Heimlings come after you, who are a Norsken faction that will come down and attack you a little bit. So you've got to be wary of those as well. But you'll probably find that you have Bordalo coming after you because you've killed all their friends. So that'll probably be the next war you go in. And if you want to see a little bit further ahead, this is a different campaign. It's the same campaign, but a different run of it. I've got a little bit more territory. I've got the Bordalo stuff here. I've just raised a Muzalon settlement because they declared war on me for some reason. So I've taken out one of their things just to send them a message. At this point, I've had a Safari army come over from Ulthuan to attack me. Castle Baston's still standing because I don't want to split the province with the dwarfs that already have it. And I'm still at war with the Wood Elves at this point. This is turn 40. They're still at war with me. But like I say, they haven't bothered me at all. They just like to be at war with me for some reason. And it does seem to get better. They do start to improve with the relations. So all is dandy from the south. So there you go. A strong start in the Grom Mortal Empires campaign. This is just the way I found the best. I tried a few different options. I tried taking out Paravon and then trying to take out Baston and going around to Bordalo. But then I had Carcassonne attacking me from the south. So that way didn't really work too well. But yeah, one of, I'm sure, a few ways to start strong as Grom in Mortal Empires. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.